Hundreds of migrants have drowned in the Mediterranean this month amid a surge in overcrowded boats heading for Europe. According to estimates, the flow of desperate migrants from North Africa hoping to reach Europe is already much higher than in the same period last year. Italy is on the front line and has urged its EU partners to do more to help. Our guest in our program is Dr. Tina campin Reuter, the director of the Rife Center for Human Rights and Conflict Resolution and associate professor of international relations and comparative politics in the Department of Government at Christopher Newport University. Dr. campin Reuters, welcome to our program. Thank you so much. Well, nearly 2,000 migrants are believed to have died this year compared with 100 deaths uh, according to the same period of the last year. What has triggered migrant numbers to rise? Um, well, according to the latest UN numbers, about 51 million people are displaced by war, violence and persecution, which is, as you say correctly, an increase of over 6 million from mm -hmm. 2012. Um, the main reason, I would say, is the war in Syria, but also uh, violence and human rights abuses in Africa, mainly in the Horn of Africa, South Sudan, and the Central African Republic. In all these cases, we see a lack of political solutions, a failure to end the wars or prevent violence, and massive human rights abuses. Mm -hmm. um, this being said, I don't think it's as straightforward. I would say the reasons for displacement have become more and more complex than originally envisioned by the 1951 Refugee Convention, which basically distinguishes between refugees and migrants and voluntary and involuntary international movement. Um, today, these lines are blurred. Yeah. In addition to violence and war, I think the most common reasons for large population movements um, is because of the increased frequency and intensity of natural disasters, but also economic pressures. Um, severe poverty um, uh, mm -hmm. and, and lack of economic opportunities. And I think mm -hmm. in the migrants that you were just discussing, we see uh, both those fleeing from violence um, and war, mainly for, from Syria, but then also um, those fleeing from maybe less a traditional, um, but less traditional refugees, migrants that are seeking uh, new life um, and new livelihoods in Europe. Yeah. Well, uh, Dr. Campion, what other routes do migrants take to enter uh, to the European Union? Um, these days, uh, many of the typical routes are from uh, Turkey uh, to Greece, across mm -hmm. the Balk Balkans by land, or then across the Mediterranean to Spain, Italy, um, or Malta. Um, the central and western Mediterranean routes see a large number of people from Africa, as well as people di displaced by the Syrian war. Um, the eastern Mediterranean route sees mostly people from Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan, and today I would say Greece is the center of, um, of the attention. Um, we have to remember, though, that the largest number of migrants um, enters mm -hmm. the EU via international airports, um, and many of those mm -hmm. who currently reside in the EU illegally have entered the EU legally or originally with valid travel documents or visas, but ended up overstaying um, the permitted period. And, and again, obviously, these are only the numbers of entries that we know or the illegal entries that we detected. The actual numbers might be much higher than that. Mm -hmm. Well, according to estimates, nearly 20,000 migrants have reached the Italian coasts alive. What will be their fate? Well, I think there's generally two options. Migrants over 18 uh, without a work permit, family connection or a history of persecution, they are called um, irregular migrants. Yeah. Um, these irregular migrants are held in detention centers until yeah. an expulsion order comes through. Um, and many of the, uh, the migrants that we, we've been talking about are actually facing this, this kind of uh, fate. Um, the other option is uh, to seek asylum or you apply for asylum, um, refugee status is granted to persons who can prove that they risk persecution or death if they return home. So these asylum seekers are placed in ac accommodation centers until their case is heard, and then a commission decides over whether they 
the request is granted. There's a, also the um, option to appeal the request if it's denied, uh, but most um, applications go through the, yeah. the, the first time, if, if so. Um, much of the work yeah. preparing asylum seekers um, in housing migrants and refugees is done by local and international um, NGOs and obviously in, in collaboration with the, with the authorities. Um, so, in other words, there's there's two options. One is um, you're you're facing um, detention in jail, and then mm-hmm. to be sent back to your to your home country, or um, you can seek request asylum. And if your uh, request is granted, you will be able to stay within the EU. Do you mean that they will have a status of refugees? Correct. Yes. Mm-hmm. Why is European Union struggling with migrants? Yes, I I think. Well, I think there's a couple of reasons. Mm. First, there's the sheer numbers. Um, as we discussed, the, um, the UNHCR, um, the UN um, High Commissioner for Refugees, yeah. uh, estimates that about uh, 40,000 migrants have reached Italy, Greece, uh, and Malta um, this year alone. Um, another 3,500 people are considered yeah. missing or dead, including the 800 who died on the tragic shipwreck in, of April 19th. Um, this is substantial um, for these, uh, from a political, economic, social, and obviously humanitarian point of view. Um, the authorities in those countries, Malta, Greece, um, Italy, uh, and so on, they are at their capacity, if not overstretched. So there's the day-to-day um, uh, question. Um, in addition to that, Italy has um, uh, ended its comprehensive search and rescue mission in 2014, and the EU replacement um, had be, has been much more limited to this day. EU leaders have decided at the summit on April 23rd that they would increase mm-hmm. uh, funding for uh, um, EU uh, rescue and, and search missions, but, but at, at this point we don't see, um, see this yet. Um, mm-hmm. Then I would say, with regards to asylum questions, the EU has a huge um, backlog. It has struggled with implementing policies regarding asylum seekers. Um, even though mm-hmm. the EU has a, a comprehensive approach to asylum, it's, very, it's been very difficult to um, implement all um, them the same all across. Uh, one of the rules of this uh, comprehensive treaty is that... Um, Migrants should apply for asylum in the state that they arrive first or uh, the country that plays the greatest part in an applicant's entry, which obviously puts Greece, Italy, and other states around the Mediterranean at a disadvantage. And so um, some of the, the, the northern states at this point do not send a, um, uh, asylum seekers and migrants back, but, uh, but others do, and so there's a, a huge backlog mm-hmm. in those southern countries um, in particular. Overall, we had about 700,000 applications for asylum for the whole EU, but only about 160,000 were actually processed. So there's, there's years' work um, ahead, and as we, we see uh, mm-hmm. numbers of, of applicants increase, this is going to be a, one of the big issues that the, the EU has to, to address. Let's talk about smugglers. European officials wish to target human traffickers would it be an easy job? Um, absolutely not. I think it's, it's, it's very difficult um, uh, um, to, to find out who they are and, and also target them. Um, a big part of why human trafficking and migration across the Mediterranean has increased over the past years because of the situation in Libya. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, um, Libya is, uh, has descended into utter chaos and leaving lots of room for smugglers uh, to make a profit. And um, one of the, the problems is, has been how to address this. The EU has not wanting to, wanted to take a direct military action, meaning deploying troops um, um, uh, to Libya, and any types of military action would have to uh, correspond yeah. with it, the international humanitarian law, and that would be very difficult to do. So... Um, Targeting uh, smugglers, human traffickers um, at the root is going to be a very difficult thing to do. Mm. And what is the impact of immigration on the economy? Um, 
Well, I, I assume, well, we're talking mainly about elite, illegal immigrants. Um, it's not entirely clear. I think we can see some uh, similarities to the United States and illegal immigration from Mexico. Um, a big focus of, of uh, studies has, have been um, looking at um, lower-paid jobs or uh, low-wage workers, less skilled workers. Um, and interestingly enough, um, undocumented foreign workers um, and their families cannot be seen to be a drain on national budgets um, or the, the economy. They're actually an asset. The problem with illegality is this, uh, the services that are provided regardless of status, such as, for example, um, schooling, health care, um, welfare uh, services, and those, and those kinds of things. Um, and uh-huh. so the impact of illegal immigration is, is somewhat difficult um, to assess, um, uh-huh. uh, particularly, again, with regards to the sort of the wider uh, societal consequences. Dr. Campion Reuter, what about inside European Union migrants? Well, I think we have to distinguish. Obviously, there's, there's this one category that we've been talking about, asylum seekers, people who move, uh, you know, arrive at the coast um, in southern uh, Italy and then uh, move throughout the European Union. It's particularly well-educated mm-hmm. um, people um, tend to try to uh, leave Italy um, towards the north where um, processes are a little bit easier and um, a little bit more generous. Okay, so yeah. we have that set of, of, of migrants um, which face all the difficulties that we've been talking about. The other set um, are EU citizens um, yeah. which can mm-hmm. freely move uh, from one EU country to another and they can also work in other EU states without having to obtain work, work visas. So obviously the, the status of these EU citizens is quite different from asylum seekers and illegal immigrants. Dr. Campion Reuter, uh, last question. What is at stake for EU countries for the year ahead? Well, I think with regards to migration a lot, um, this is a, has been an issue uh, that the EU struggled with, and obviously the urgency of the matter has just increased over the past couple of months, weeks and months, with, with, the, with the most recent tragedies. Um, I think uh, beyond the economic and financial issues uh, relating uh, to the crisis, I think we, um, we need to talk about the human, humanitarian crisis and the, the human rights crisis that, that we're facing, the question of um, human dignity, um, um, the right to life, and many of those values that the European uh, Union and Europe in mm-hmm. general is built upon. And I think what we'll see is um, a crystallization of those, those questions over the next couple of years. What does it mean um, for Europe and how will Europe uh, target these types of questions? Dr. Tina Campin Reuter, the director of Rife Center for Human Rights and Conflict Resolution and associate professor of international relations and comparative politics in the Department of Government at Christopher Newport University. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.